podcast brought to you by Points Bet. Today is June 6th. It's also a Monday. My name is Janice Scurrio. With me, as always, is my wonderful co host, Sabria Whitaker. Sabria, how are you doing this okay Monday? I'm doing well. We're coming off a win, so I couldn't ask for much more. We always love when we do shows after dubs, just mainly because the vibes are good, uh, just everything's good. I don't know. Uh, Maybe the food is going to be good. I haven't eaten yet, so that's why I'm talking about food already. Anyway, uh, some updates from the squad since the last time we saw you. We're the squad, by the way. Uh, So, Sabria, what have you been up to lately? Well, I mean, I feel like we haven't been here forever. It's been, what, just two weeks? It's only been, like, literally 14 days since we last saw each other, yeah. Well, um, I've been doing a few things. Always got to go on a little tour, so took a little trip to Indiana to see a game there. But um, really, I, let's see, Player Society dropped some very, very dope Chicago Sky merch that we've finally been waiting on. And they sent me um, their online release. So I don't know if you've heard, but there's a release in the arena that's blue. It's sweats. And then they sent me the black short set and if you can see if you're watching with us and you see the picture it was so perfect because i'm wearing one of the championship rings that i think are the best championship rings by any team thus far so i got to sport that court side so i love that court side game um let's see what else yesterday um i had the pleasure of going to the game with lene harper Mm. she uh for those who don't know Sky player um, at one point in time recently was on the training camp for the Mystics and her foundation, the Harper Kid Foundation. um, I got to surprise a group of girls with uh, tickets to the game yesterday. So we got to do that with her. And then a couple days ago, I was on Brother from Another and I got to talk all things WNBA, rep for All City Network, the CSGO Sky Show, and talk a little bit about Grow the Game. All right. Whoa. Yeah, you've been busy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, First of all, I loved that courtside outfit. That is uh, indeed some major drip right there. I think definitely the ring is the uh, the the cherry on top there, in my opinion. Right. I hope they come out with some replicas. I saw people asking, would would you get one? I think I think I might. I think I would. Uh, I don't I don't know if I would pass it off as a real one, though. I I, I would maybe just be a little shy to do that. But you know what? You know, I I would probably just do it for the heck of it. (laughs) mood so what have you been up to (laughs) that's a great question uh so essentially i've been to a handful of the games i was actually at tuesday's game uh so that was a really fun uh, pre-game and post-game experience i got to kind of hang out on the court a little bit uh actually just saw uh the mercury do some shoot around uh skylar diggins smith took some photos with some fans really nice of her to do that uh yeah and kind of got a couple of peeks at diamond too uh so it was really cool to see her back and uh, also so too, uh, asked uh, Coach Wade a couple of questions, uh, especially regarding uh, Lee Yaru and her arrival in Chicago. Uh, also, to um, yeah, the post game experience was also fun as well. Uh, got to hear a uh, Sloot and uh, Rebecca Gardner talk a little bit about their performances that game. Uh, really awesome. Uh, yeah, and then I also was on the Phoenix Mercury podcast uh, just this past week. So big shout out to Corbin, Aaliyah, and Mallory for being awesome hosts. Uh, I also kind of did a little back and forth with the Phoenix Mercury uh, Twitter account. Uh, I didn't know that it was Mallory uh, behind the uh, the Mercury Twitter, uh, but afterwards, uh, she revealed herself. She's mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm Mallory. I'm like, hey, I'm Janice. Uh, so after this, uh, that account just tweeted this really nice graphic of the Sky podcast and the Mercury podcast, you know, s- saying that it was indeed a good game. And it was. It really was. I it, had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a good game. So first, I want to say, when you were at the game, on Tuesday I also was at the game on Tuesday and I actually got to go on the court because they pulled me for the drip cam did you see me I did yes I did you did okay <laughs> so you left that out of your recap so I was just wondering um two where was my invite for this show because as everyone should know I used to be a Mercury fan back when Candace Dupree was there so I gladly would have appeared in my Candace Dupree jersey and have my little Phoenix, Mercury, uh, throwback, autographed, diamonds, uh, Diana Taurasi jersey. So next time, take me with you. Or we could just go to Phoenix. 
Hmm, we could. I actually had no idea you were a Mercury fan, or you used to be a Mercury fan, so I'll, I'll keep that in my pocket for next time. Uh, I actually might have committed myself. I actually told Mallory, um, perhaps accidentally, that the Wintrust chicken tenders were probably better than the ones that they have in Phoenix, and then she said, uh, actually, no, our chicken tenders are better, and I'm like, oh, uh, that just means I have to go over there and try them for yes. myself, uh, so I might have mildly committed to go to Phoenix and uh, j- just for chicken tenders and also basketball too that's also probably pretty important yeah I would love to go I mean I keep saying this my goal already is just well it was by the time I'm 30 my plan was to go to a home game at every NBA and WNBA arena I don't think that's gonna happen because I'm 27 and that's a lot I have a lot of catching up to do but I think the W arenas are a lot easier to do and I would love to go to a Phoenix game because their energy has always like the x factor has always been truly an X factor. Um, And maybe if we go, maybe we can give some of that Chicago sky energy and maybe Diana will get ejected from that game too. (laughs) And then it'll be easier for us to win because we almost lost that game. Yeah, we almost did. Um, Yeah, after Diana was ejected, uh, I actually kind of threw this question back at the Mercury podcast. Uh, I asked them, hey, uh, were you guys just kind of, oh no, Diana's gone. Like, we're already missing two big bodies on the floor. So, like, like, who else do we have? Um, I mean, they were still in good hands anyway. Uh, Tina Charles was definitely kind of gave this guy a lot of trouble. Um, And also, too, Diamond to Shields uh, put up double points as well. Good for her. Uh, So I asked them, hey, were you guys disappointed that uh Diane Taurasi was ejected or were you guys like you know what it's gonna be okay we got this like we're gonna come back we're gonna like be fresh uh, Diana's gonna rub them up in the locker room and they're gonna come back and win this uh, so uh, they said that they were more so oh no like this is terrible really? yeah <laughs> honestly is it really a WNBA season if Diana doesn't get ejected like I really <laughs> wish someone could run the stats on that but lately um like Bailey Caldwell saying in the comments I've seen a lot where her efficiency is a little troubling for the team in the beginning. But even with all that being said, I'm someone that I've always said, if I need like a last minute push, a last minute run, I want Diana on the floor. Like, sure. It's like, to me, she's one of those players that she could stink it up. She could stink up the place for all three quarters. And if it's a close game or we're down, I'm, I just want her in the game that last quarter but I think her getting ejected gave them a a little bit of energy that maybe they didn't know that they needed definitely a little bit of a a kick in the tush if you may say uh so Sky Show says that uh you watched that ep great stuff the Merc team were down bad after you left uh so (laughs) I think uh, one thing that Aaliyah pointed out uh before was very interesting uh that uh, she mentioned that this Merc team really has a problem with chemistry that she's like uh do they even know each other do they even have a group chat like 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 have they ever played basketball with each other before uh so that is one problem that the three of them noticed with the mercury would you agree with that it's yeah it's weird I mean I get it but I think I've said this before um I did not think that adding Tina Charles was going to be a good idea just because I I get it people have there are superstars and there are you know people who carry absolutely carry their teams Mm -hmm. and she was the league's leading scorer last season but when you think about her being the league's leading scorer, and you look at the Mystics, I mean, you kind of have to wonder, okay, what's going on if she's the league's leading scorer, but they're not the league's leading team, like the most winning team. And so I think she'd gotten used to carrying a team, and that doesn't work when you have both Skylar and Diana sitting kind of like right there for them, and they already had their core with – uh, the two of them and how they already play with, let's see, uh, Breezy Turner and Sophie. And so to add someone like that and Diamond, that's a lot. And not to mention the coach. I mean, you can have great players on any team and great coaches. But, I mean, look, we see how they were with Sandy Rondello and now look at what Sandy is going, like what oh, she has Sandy, going on in yeah. New York. So it's just like you really can't just start taking people out of, 
the teams are already on it and expecting the same results. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know uh, it's been brought up several times, even in Sky post game conferences. Uh, uh, Coach Wade has talked about chemistry a few times, where you've got a couple of new faces in the mix, of course. And now that the team is, has played a couple more practices together, they're gelling more together. Like Ka is back. That definitely has made a pretty huge impact already in the games in which she's played. Uh, but of course, too, uh, we've got a couple of new, new, newer faces. So uh, Lee Yaru, who I'll, we'll talk about in a little bit and also to Julie Alamond who is going to join the team tomorrow uh, so very interesting there uh, so before we get into that um, yeah a, a little bit more from across the league uh, so like you said before uh, the only team that the sky is probably going to have trouble with are the aces uh, they absolutely mean business coach Hammond man like she she knows she knows I got my autograph oh did you I don't know if you saw it but yes oh <laughs> I did I definitely was sitting there with my uh, Silver Stars, Becky Hammond jersey, and oh my, my marker. Gosh. Like, hey, Coach Hammond, like, hopefully no one is, like, recording this right now, but <laughs> can I please get your autograph? Oh, my gosh. All right. So it, it has been a dream of mine to meet her for a while. So as a Spurs fan, like, I have loved her for, for forever. Um, so w what was it like getting her autograph? What was that experience like? I mean, like, it was just so crazy. I don't even remember if she said anything. Like, it might have just been a complete silence, but I kept talking because, like, little kid me. I mean, just the fact that that team doesn't even exist anymore yeah. kind of puts it into perspective of how long ago I was watching her, like, growing up. It was – I was so happy to have it. Um, definitely one of those things I will cherish for a very long time. And I also just want to say that what she's doing – um, before their loss to Connecticut, I want to say their 9-1 to start was like the best start in history. And so I'm kind of looking at your Spurs and all the rest of the NBA teams like, oh, hmm. Yeah. Hmm, I thought you said she wasn't qualified. Hmm, interesting. So, yeah, love this for her. Love this for the Aces. Well, not really. I can't say I love this for the Aces because then that becomes a problem for us. <laughs> but... I, a, I mean, yeah. I love that. It's hard to hate that team. It really isn't. It really isn't. No, it's like uh, yeah, Derica Hamby, Kelsey Plum, like some 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 really excellent players. Did on that you team. see the tweets about them? I did. Yes. And, and throwing the water <laughs> the water balloons at her. Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. I don't know if uh, how I would react if like someone just assaulted me with water balloons in a restaurant. <laughs> and it wasn't even an outside <laughs> restaurant, so it I was, was a little indoors. concerned. Yeah, um, I don't know. That, that kind of tells me that uh, they have fun together. Yes, yeah, that, so. that was the point I was making. Like, their team chemistry is amazing, and you see that on the court. It, like, uh, the other game, Jackie Young went down, rolled her ankle, and, I mean, she, like, couldn't barely walk on it and still got up to make her free throws because, you know, if you don't make your free throws for an injury, you can't come back into the game later. Sure, yeah. The team really rallied around and was like, we're going to do this for Jackie. So, yeah, again, kind of love them up until the point it starts to threaten the sky, but very hard to hate them. Yeah, they are a very fun team. Uh, when you said throwing at first, I thought you were referring to uh, Kelsey Plum throwing T-shirts into the this, the crowd. Her cannon? Yeah, she she's does got this a every cannon season. for an yes. arm. Yeah, oh, my yes. God. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, don't they have the same ownership as the Raiders? They might want to go, like, take her out there a few times because she does that every – and I I think um, her favorite player is Tom Brady, and he was – I think. Am I, think, I saying I, I, I think you, you're – yeah, he was sitting courtside right. at a game and, not too long ago. And she ago. said yeah. that – and she, and so she was telling the story afterwards in the presser that she saw him, that they told her, like, he's going to be out there, and she was trying to keep it cool. She's like – don't say anything. Don't say anything. And then he, he made eye contact with her. She walked over and she was like, I love you, man. You're a dog and barked at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, I, I could see it going both ways, man. Uh, especially uh, I remember what you said about. Um, wait. I, 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 you said something online that related to all of this, and all of a sudden it, it left my brain. But anyway, um, yeah, Kelsey Plum would be a really interesting quarterback if. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? Oh, what was I? Tw I tweeted about it. What about you? Tweeted about something that I was going to bring up that related to all of this, but I don't know. My was brain, it, like, who would you hang with the, on a day, or no? I uh, no, it, it it was not that. It was uh, oh oh, it was it was about um. Uh, whenever you see male athletes at a WNBA oh, game, yes. you, like you will always know that those male athletes were there. 
Yes. That happened a few times. So the, I'm so glad that came back to me. It's like, yes. yes. <laughs> so I know that there was, so DeMar DeRozan did a great job the yeah. other day He at the L.A. sports game. Now, unfortunately, I hate to have to throw this shade. I really do. But I remember when he came to a Sky game, and I want to say he had on like a ski mask or something, and it was very much, don't come over here and talk to me. Like, mm. don't put me on the Jumbotron. I mean, for some reason, that's what I get from a lot of people. Like, the, the game Justin Fields came. It was very, like, weird, very unwelcoming. I will say, um, Javante Green, like, and uh, Patrick Williams are, like, the only two who go out of their way. Mm -hmm. And then I was watching another L.A. game, and... Kevin Durant was there, and it was the cutest, I remember, because the caption said Slim, or, you know, Brittany Sykes was on the floor, and apparently Kevin Durant's nickname is Slim Reaper. So it was like Slim's on the court, Slim Reaper in the, you know, court side. That was very cute. But in the video that they were showing of, I guess, like one of the hosts talking to him, he looked like he did not want to be there. And that's what prompted the tweet. It's just like, it. Listen, production teams in the W, if they see a man, like a professional man in the building, he could not want to be there. He could be on the phone. He could have a, a ski mask and sunglasses on. He could have a bubble wrapped around him that says, do not talk to me with a sign that says, do not talk to me. And they're going <laughs> to yeah. go up there and talk to him and put him on the camera anyway. Doesn't matter. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I could definitely see, like, oh, hey, here is this male athlete, you know, attending a WNBA game. So, therefore, like, I want to give them attention. But exactly. this, at the same time, like, that also shouldn't be the focal point of the entire thing. Like, there, there, it, there are women playing the game on the floor, so maybe we should give them a little more attention. So, Or at the very <laughs> least, go to the W players that are in the building. I'd rather, like, if you're going to mute the game, because I don't know – what's going on with the mics these days, but I was watching, I think, maybe an Amazon broadcast, and I was hearing entire conversations from the players on the field, um, the field, on the court, and it was, like, super, in, like, they really are, like, yapping and talking to each other. So now I respectfully ask that they not mute my broadcast, but if you're going to mute my broadcast for an interview, please let it be a woman and not a man. Yeah. <laughs> please. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Um, so a couple of comments have already been talking about the sun, which actually was already on my list next. Uh, so yeah. Um, so the aces do mean business, but you shouldn't ignore the sun either. Uh, yeah. It looks mm -hmm. like they've, or it looks you like, know how I feel. you know how I feel about Connecticut. I feel like I say this every week. Hmm. They don't scare me. I just, I'm sorry. I cannot respect a team that had what coach of the year, most valuable player, most improved player, maybe. I don't remember who won last year. And, like, I don't remember who won six women of the year. But the point is they had, like, at least three awards, like individual awards last season, and just choked it away like they were eating a Popeye's biscuit. <laughs> and I don't – I can't say, like, ooh, I'm, I'm shaking in my boots like I'm scared. Like, the whole disrespect hashtag, I don't want to hear about it anymore – Honestly, as much as I love Alyssa Thomas and I love, I guess, what Kurt has done, it breaks my heart. <laughs> it breaks my heart to see them go away from JJ. I mm -hmm. feel like JJ is the only one being disrespected in Connecticut. And I say free JJ. And until they do right by her, I don't want to see them winning any championship. Sorry, not sorry. The sun will get so far and start glitching. Exactly. <laughs> there's no, I keep telling people, there is no reason we lost. I mean, we won that series. Hey, Connecticut, I wanted to ask them, what's wrong with y'all? What were y'all doing? And you want to know what the problem was? <laughs> mm. Alyssa Thomas came back, and much respect for her, like, truly. Like, I know people joke about how the broadcast will never let you forget the fact that Alyssa Thomas literally basically has, like, no show. Like, she can't even really shoot for real. And... I have to love that that grit and that determination. And as much as that, as much as I commend that, they went away from JJ. You cannot just have a whole player that was dominating an MVP, and your star player comes back, and you're just like, nope. All those, you know, all those plays we ran for JJ. Sorry, not sorry. Go ahead, Alyssa, and that's how, and that's why they lost. That's how I feel. And they're gonna do it again. They're already doing it again. So we will see what happens. All right. Uh, I, so I don't know how you feel about I actually I could probably predict on how you feel about power rankings, but I believe in some that I've seen uh, 
the sky our third while the sun our second. So I think that's going to grain of salt though huge grain of salt isn't that what it was last year if yeah, i remember it correctly it was always connecticut and vegas going back and forth mm -hmm. on the top and we were just even a little bit lower and still you know went right through connecticut but that's why i'm saying um big kathy and them are so bogus for changing that playoff format because they know if we get in a series with vegas <sighs> Is going to be very, very stressful. Yes, it will. But like, mm. um, let's say Glassic Sky has the best bench. I am starting to realize that Vegas might be in a little bit of trouble with that bench. Mm, yeah. Um, I, I do know the, the Sky bench is a lot deeper and a lot longer than we had initially thought about. Because I remember in a couple of episodes ago, uh, we were thinking that maybe depth might be an issue, especially in those earlier preseason games where we're just like, all right, so we don't have Candace, we don't have Ka. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we, we just pretty much have... Um, we have Emma, yeah, we have we have Z, uh, and we're losing games. Um, so is depth an issue? And I think now at this point, the bench is definitely clicking now. Uh, everyone definitely has gotten their motor started. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel as if the Sky really do have a strong bench. I agree. I think the only people who maybe could have touched us with that was Connecticut. I like Connecticut's mm -hmm. bench. But – I just went on that whole rant, so you already know how I feel about that. So I think if I have to choose between it, I think the sky win that. All right. All right. So uh, like I mentioned before, Julie Alamond is joining the team on a Tuesday. And Sky Show also just said Julie is about to show up and show out. Mark my words. I hope she does. Um, so, uh, yeah, your thoughts on Julie coming? I don't want to jinx anything. Um, but I just, you know... I don't know why, but this season I feel like it's more noticeable with any team when they start adding new people and changing rotations, and it's just, like, really a headache, and I feel like we went through that already, so mm -hmm. I'm just, fingers crossed, hoping that it, it works. Yeah, absolutely. I know an earlier question uh, that was asked to Coach Wade is like, all right, so you've got all these options for starters, so are you going to go with a uh, consistent uh, starting five? And so he said, yeah, I've got some options. Like, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to be creative. Uh, so, so yeah, there's there's going to be a lot of interesting things you can do with those line, uh, th those line, yeah, those starting lineups. I'm getting my my sports crossed here. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, what he has in store for us. Right. So as you might know, uh, the Sky are on a three game winning streak. Uh, so that most recently beat the Mystics 91 to 82 in the blue jerseys. in the blue jerseys, in the blue jerseys. Uh, they beat the Dream 73 to 65. And uh, last Tuesday, they beat the Mercury 73 70. All right. So let's go ahead and just go into our next segment. Uh, a curse reversed. Uh, the, so the Sky finally won a game wearing the Blue Rebel jerseys. And so were you the one that, that initially pointed out that they've lo they, they pretty much have lost all their games while wearing those blue jerseys? I, I feel like I'm going to have to give that to Sky, Sky Show Shy. I want to say that it was definitely a, a thing I noticed on Twitter. And then last season I spoke with someone on the graphic design team who confirmed and said that the team has actually noticed that as well. And they had conversations and that's why they stopped wearing it toward the end of last season. So fortunately for us, it's over with maybe hopefully. I hope so too. I hope so too. Um, so uh, yeah, winning a game finally in those jerseys. I, th I think it's a really great sign. Uh, yes. <laughs> it definitely attests to how strong this team really is. So, uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that Mystics game. Uh, again, we love revenge games. Uh, the Emma Misaman revenge game. Uh, so, she, uh, 13 points. She shot six for seven from the field, four rebounds, five assists, five steals. Uh, yeah, she definitely looked great yesterday. Uh, so, on the other side, Elena Deladon did not play. Uh, She's resting. Uh, they certainly missed that 49.9 field goal percentage. But anyway, uh, they can rematch that on Wednesday as their next game is going to be in D.C. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, some other recurring things we've noticed from the past few games. Uh, so uh, 
brought up in the press conference on Tuesday, uh, some shooting struggles. So uh, yesterday, the sky shot 67% in the first quarter uh, and then 20% in the second. Uh, they shot just 40% versus the Mercury and 42% versus the Dream. Um, yeah, any, any thoughts on that? That Dream game was... I don't know what that was. Um, yeah, I, that game did make me a little concerned because it was like we were molly whopping them. And then I'm not really sure what happened, but it became a little too close for comfort. And like as much as I love the dream, like it still is the dream. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, I really hope they figure it out. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think at one point uh, the dream or the sky were leading by 20 points and then that 20 point lead was just poof, gone. Yeah. And that game got a little a little physical. I feel like. Right. Like it was very I mean, it was a little spicy, except for when Azare, um, I think Cheyenne Parker was going to inbound the ball and you can see Azare like. Like, literally waving her in her face. I was like, oh, and then that made me miss <laughs> Cheyenne. And it's just like, uh, sometimes Chicago makes me feel like Dallas. I don't know if you hear, like, the running joke on Twitter, but they call it, like, Dallas University because a lot of players go to Dallas and they struggle, and then they go to other teams and they do amazing. And when you look at a lot of all the players, the sky – have a really big book of people who used to be on the team and it's like yeah, yeah. Cheyenne I miss you like Sylvia how cool would it have uh, been for her and Candace to be on the same team during their farewell farewell tour and it's just like oh a quick side note I'm gonna be in Minnesota next month so I'm gonna find ooh. that Sylvia mural and I'm gonna take pictures in front of it yeah, I wish you would have told me. I, I keep realizing that Minnesota is like only eight hours away. So it sometimes is, yeah. the urge to just get up and be like, oh, there's a game in Minnesota is very, very, very strong. But mm -hmm. please do while you're there. Please go see if you can find any trace of Maya Moore, please. OK. Yeah. And then I just watched randomly. I just happened to be watching game four of what the 20. 17 WNBA finals and it was Minnesota versus the LA Sparks and I'm looking and I was like is that coach Wade completely forgetting he used to be an assistant coach for Minnesota so oh wow you may see some remnants of him over there too oh wow I actually did not know that today I learned Ooh. Yeah. Some interesting Coach Wade history for mm -hmm. you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so some other things about the sky. Uh, so shooting from the perimeter has gotten better. Uh, 45 percent as opposed to 23 or 45 percent of versus uh, the Mystics as opposed to 26.3 versus the Dream. Uh, but other than that, yeah, uh, defense is a little bit something that they actually hmm I don't know I'm, I'm looking at these notes and uh, I wrote this uh, after Tuesday Tuesday night's game uh, but coach Wade basically said uh, we're still trying to find our defensive identity we held this team meaning the mercury to 40 percent we're better when we don't send teams to the free throw line hmm I don't know I feel as if defense is probably one of the more strong suits of the sky uh, but coach Wade thinks otherwise what do you think um, I mean, there are a couple of times lately where I've seen a more frustration fouls than normal, which was like, oh, that's that's different. Um, but I mean, I get it. I think we do sometimes send them too, too, too much. So I, I can see why that can become an issue because I definitely think that had a lot to do with Atlanta's game. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so let's stop fouling people I guess <laughs> <laughs> so uh, an interesting uh, fact that I tweeted out yesterday is that the, the sky is first in the WNBA and they're op limiting their opponents free throw percentage so uh, when they do send teams to the line uh, they don't make their shots uh, which uh, of course like matters but when you're sending teams to the free throw line quite a bit then those are free buckets that yeah you're giving away there um, let's see what else do I have here oh how did I skip this part over? Candace Parker actually got a double-double uh, versus the Mystics. So 12 points, 13 rebounds. Uh, so uh, we were talking earlier before we jumped on the mic uh, that 
yeah, uh, we have to give their players their uh, players their flowers. Yes. Uh, so again, like, I feel as if we can't talk about Candace enough. Uh, she's still balling out quite a bit. Um, going back to Tuesday's game, uh, Candace really uh, didn't shoot as well, but she still did great defensively. She was great on the boards. Uh, but yeah, she's going to have off days, but I mean, she did get a triple-double, and now she has a double-double so far. Uh, but, yeah, uh, hypothetically, I know we've talked about this a lot, but if this is Candace Parker's last year, uh, say, what can we be doing to appreciate her more? Uh, besides, of course, just talking about her more. <laughs> I don't know, because she's such a person that, like, I don't want that. Yeah, right. So it's like one of those things where it's like, hmm, I want to respect your wishes because I should, because boundaries, but also do you understand you're a legend? A leg- exactly. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I mean, at one point I thought about maybe literally giving um, legends flowers and taking notes from just people all over and writing them out, like any positive messages and putting them with the flowers, like literally giving it to them. But I'm not sure. I mean... Yeah, I don't want to do anything that's going to upset her, but also how do we even process this? Like, I know, I, it's just been something that's in the back of my mind too. And I mean, like, I, I would go onto the floor and just watch this guy shoot before games and then I'd see Candace and I'm like, uh, this never gets old. Like, you're just watching her shoot. I'll, I'll just be standing there looking very calm. And the, But internally, I'm fangirling. I'm like, oh, my God, that's Candace Parker, like, right in front of me. Like, oh, my God. Yep. Um, but, yeah, uh, also, too, the same thing can be said about uh, Allie Quigley, uh, Courtney Vandersloot. A- again, a couple of goats, too. Uh, and, the, and the story with them. Yeah. The competition of, of going back and forth of, of the, the all-time scoring. leading score. Yeah. yeah. And I heard that um, on the broadcast they said that they made a pact that at the end – they will just tie. And I was hoping they were going to do that. Ooh, before. I didn't know that. Part and of I'm the like, story. that is so cute. I was like, I'm sure, I'm like, I'm sure they're just going to tie. But it's like, I hope that one of them doesn't have like some super amazing game and like makes the difference too, too much. Mm-hmm. But I love that they're just going to go back and forth all season. And then, tie. but to say that they're just going to tie at the end sounds very closing a chapter to me. But if that's how they want to do it, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it either. It's poetic. Uh, it is uh, kind of beautiful, honestly, in a way. I, I, yeah. I honestly, I, I didn't know about that part of the story. Uh, so th- there's a little. Uh, it, it, it's it's very romantic, just in the in the actual sense, and also in like the ba- the basketball sense too. Uh, so ah, oh, that's I'm gonna have to think about that for a, yeah. a brief moment. <laughs> Right. Um, so we mentioned a little bit before about uh, chemistry issues on the Mercury. Uh, so again, this is more retroactive to Tuesday's game uh, that especially uh, sometimes uh, chemistry might can be an issue for the sky. Uh, so Coach Wade basically said, uh, so there's been less practice time, less focus on defense. They need to get a rhythm of playing with each other. We have players that don't want to step on each other's toes. Mm. Uh, their way of making chemistry is not being too aggressive so uh yeah uh, at this point I feel as if a lot of those chemistry issues uh, seem to be kind of working or, or at least working themselves out mm-hmm. uh but at this point I mean if you look at the mercury and you look at the sky there's an obvious difference that the sky definitely have better chemistry but do you see it as being still somewhat of an issue or not really well I mean so obviously this isn't the case anymore because Diamond is gone, but just the fact that you mentioned Phoenix. Um, there's the videos, and I wasn't there, and I did not watch it, so this was new to me when I saw it on Twitter. But there's a video of Diamond getting her ring, and then she goes and hugs everyone. Oh, I saw that, And yeah. then it got to the end. The last two hugs were not they, very... Yeah. yeah, and that was very, very interesting to me. So it's just like a reminder to me that what you see on the court may not actually be what's going on, and that could still bleed onto the court and affect it. And we're just like, well, why is that going on? And it be something completely different because as fans, we think we know everything and we love to you know read tweets and watch videos, but a reminder that we really, we really have don't. no clue yeah. what's going on. 
So, I mean, hopefully they just, whatever it is, they figure it out and they get it together. But, I mean, I get it. Like, there's a boss, right? And sometimes it does take someone having a breakout game, but just figuring out where this person can be more aggressive or assertive without taking anything away from that. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, there are only so many rebounds and only so many points that a team can get. So figuring out how someone can get their individual goals without messing up someone else's. Right, yeah. That's very understandable, too. And I mean, like, as someone who uh, just likes and appreciates individual players, too, I mean, sometimes as fans, we forget that this is really a team effort. So, like, I'm a huge Diamond fan, but of course, too, I mean, seeing that whole uh, hug parade was honestly a little bit jarring for me. But I mean, uh, <laughs> but, look, but honestly, though, up until that game, everyone at least fan side, we all love Diamond. Yeah, and of course, everyone yeah. was like, oh, we love that for Diamond. Like, Diamond was going off in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And then she came home to that game, and it felt like a different Diamond. Yeah. And it was very clear that whatever it is about something in Chicago, it was absolutely time for her to leave. I think everybody won that in the end. And maybe it's something, like, she still has to – maybe find closure with but after that game I was like almost like oh I I hope you never have to come back to Chicago again because that was very like sad a little bit and I hated that for us but love that she's you know finding that with her new team and hopefully you know when we have these new additions of like Rebecca and everyone they can gel how they want to gel yeah absolutely Uh, and I feel as if uh, diamond splitting from the sky was very mutually beneficial. And we've mentioned before on the show that, uh, yeah, she needed somewhere else where she could grow. Uh, and yeah, uh, since then, I mean, yeah, the team's been great uh, since then. So my God, I wish Z was at the Phoenix game. So she would have hugged, big hugged diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, uh, uh, Azare was out uh, sick, yeah. and uh, Coach Wade said that she ate something he cooked. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I thought that was kind of a funny joke. Hopefully Z is okay by now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we were talking about chemistry. Uh, so that leads on to uh, Lee Yeru, who I wanted to talk about a little bit. I know some of the comments uh, has uh, – she's popped up in some of the comments. Uh, so essentially uh, she's there to protect the rim, uh, go to the line when she needs to. She's a very good free throw shooter. Um, I don't know. Uh, to me, she seemed a little lost on the floor, but it could be just mainly because she's only played in, like, like limited minutes. Right. and then just left. And now it's coming back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. she she yeah she was out for a, a game, uh, came back, and also too uh, she's playing in a new league. She's playing in a new country. Right. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I feel as if uh, we haven't seen the best of Lee quite yet. Uh, so on Sunday's game, every Sky player except for Lee recorded a point and an assist. Uh, so I don't know. I, I still believe in her though. I, I still think she. For sure. uh, I, I I don't I don't think we've seen like truly what we sh- what she can do yet. Yeah, uh, like Sky Show said, Lee's got the stuff. She definitely needs minutes. Uh, yes. uh, she, uh, he thinks that Ruthie uh, gets those number post numbers first. Uh, yeah, so in that case, uh, when you really think about it, the Sky team it truly is really loaded. Yes, have a lot of depth. So I'm not I'm not worried at <laughs> all about anyone's individual performance because, like you said, off nights happen. Um, <laughs> Sky Show. <laughs> Sky Show is like one of the funniest people yes. uh, on on Sky Twitter. And my Yuru had the same food poisoning as Z. James Wade cooking is tearing this team apart. <laughs> First of all, I want to know like what exactly he's making that is 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 making them all sick. <laughs> well, hopefully he's not like you know when. Um, so there's a new partnership officially with. Um, Garrett's popcorn. That's right. So hopefully, like, they didn't send them a bunch of boxes and he's just, like, making everyone eat a bunch of Garrett's popcorn. <laughs> I don't know. Chicago, if I eat an entire tub of Chicago mix, I, I, I myself might pull a triple-double. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, Garrett's and this guy, if you uh, want to sign me to a one-day contract, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm like, 5'4". I haven't like taken a, a shot since high school. Just give me some Garrett's popcorn and I can make things work here. <laughs> I approve that. <them. laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, 
let's talk a little bit more. I know like we typically jump around when we talk about uh, a lot of the concepts here. So uh, that game versus the Mercury, uh, they really scared us in that uh, third quarter. They came back after Diana, Diana Taurasi was ejected. Uh, yeah, so Courtney Vandersloot uh, just absolutely erupted 12 points in the fourth quarter versus the Mercury on Tuesday. Uh, so she said uh, it was attacking switches. Uh, it's not like that every game. It's adjusting last minute and the ball was in my hands a lot. It's just making plays down the stretch. Uh, so, uh, yeah, besides Sloot absolutely balling out uh, and making things happen, uh, yeah, that fourth quarter, th- this guy definitely showed some really great resilience there. Uh, so what was your take on that fourth? Um, It was – I just remember looking up and saying, wait a minute, the score is what now? <laughs> like, how exactly did we get here? Very – chippy um it was a lot going on it's hard it's actually really a blur I just remember at some point yelling really loudly I'm not even sure what it was for anymore um but they just need not make it that close ever again that's (laughs) like especially with them I think this might be a rival and I like rivalries like I still really want one with Indiana because I think it'll be spicy but I'm okay with this and if it's a rivalry and I I think it's safe to say it is. I mean, Diana was bleeding. So I'm just. Well, I actually, I I know I've seen photos. I saw photos of Diana's bloody elbow afterwards, but like I didn't see uh, anything happen or I I didn't see it happen. Uh, I just saw the photos on Twitter afterwards. And uh, I think uh, some, someone asked a salute if she saw what happened. Mm -hmm. And all she said was, I saw it happen. And that's all I can say. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it and it was funny because it was with Candace. And that just makes it so funny because I have to go back to the Yukon yeah. and Tennessee thing. Because Ooh. absolutely between the two of them, I don't expect it to be cute. Like no, if yeah, this no. was like a Candace and Sylvia thing, I know that they're actually cool. It's just like on the game. But with the two of them, mm. I'm not. Now from what the clip that I saw, so it happened in front of me, but from where I was sitting, like, courtside, I didn't have necessarily the best angle of the foul itself. So when I saw it on Twitter, it was with Candace. Hard to figure out how she would have drawn blood from that. But, I mean, like I said, that game was really, as the commentators say, ticky-tacky. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm not shocked that she was bleeding. Don't really know how it happened from there. But she was fouled. Nonetheless, Candace absolutely fouled her. And I love Candace. Candace is probably the person who thinks she never fouls the most in the entire league. And that's saying a lot because there are a few people on my no foul slash whining, like first, first team. She's definitely one of them. But Diana's response to that was like, I was, it happened right in front of me and I just couldn't believe what was going on because it's like, I think Diana was like, now how can I top? breaking a door today and she absolutely (laughs) went out there and did it and I just felt so bad for the little kids who were wearing the jersey because I said oh "Oh, baby put that up she's not she's not signing that today sorry I remember you tweeted you're like okay if you want DT's autograph you need to ask her before the game because if you do it like during Mm -hmm. or after Mm -hmm. like oh no you Mm -hmm. you do not want to approach her oh no like if she like I remember one time I was in Indiana and I, I literally drove all the way to Indiana because I don't remember what happened. Either she didn't come to the Chicago game last season, like the first one, or I just missed it. So I was like, okay, well, let me go to Indiana when they play there, and I'll see what happens. So, like, I'm sitting there. I got her jersey out, and I had BG's jersey out, and I'm just, like, right there. At one point, Tamika Ketchins even comes past, and, like, I'm kind of freaking out, and she's, like, you know, joking with me, like, get those Phoenix jerseys out of here. But it's right there, like, I hear Diana joking um, about something that happens, good energy. Next thing I know, uh, Tierra McCalvin, who's now in Dallas, was at the time in Indiana. Her and DT got into it, like, into it. And Diana was so mad. And they won. And she still didn't sign the jersey. So I'm like, well, if her just getting into it with the player, even with the win, she's not signing the jersey, I know she's not signing it after an ejection and a loss. And I was told that she left the building before the game was even over. Like, she was gone. Wow. So she wasn't even there to do anything after the game anyway. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, and Coach Wade just assumed she was in the locker room too. My <laughs> At this point, I feel like that's Chicago. At this point, Chicago should probably have security at the locker room whenever Phoenix is there. Because is that really where you want her to go? I mean, did you see what happened in Dallas with between Dallas and LA and mm. Enrique? Did you watch that game? No, I did not. So no. <laughs> Enrique, um, I don't know if her brain kind of just tweaked a little bit, like that glitching that we talked about earlier, but she, like, pump faked the free throw, which you can't do. Um, So it's a violation. So she pump faked it. So she missed it. It was a close game. She missed the first free throw, pump fakes the second one somehow, some way, and obviously it's a violation, so she's upset. She's at the scorer's table, and she kicks it. It's like an LED one, and it broke. So you can see that the – because it's LED, like – you can see if it's there or not. And she just broke it and it fell. Like the Sparks PR person, Eli, is sitting behind it. He just audibly jumps. It was a, it was hilarious. So at this point, I just feel like teams are just going to have to start identifying risks and, and just sitting there with like their uh, adjust, like the, what do you call it, insurance adjuster or something <laughs> and just start writing people fines because – yeah, the two of them definitely hide all your valuables or anything that could potentially break. <laughs> a new uh, WNBA career, yeah, risk assessment analysis. <laughs> Some sort of like algorithm that basically computes whether, you know, if certain players are in certain cities, you might want to might want to beef up security a little Correct. bit. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go on to uh, wh- something that uh, I think it, it, it is still on my mind. It has been maybe 24 hours since this happened. Uh, but yeah, Dana Evans and the shot heard around the yes, world. Oh everyone my gosh. says she shot from Gary, Indiana, and she might as well have. I should have used that. Dang. I I, I mean, I, I was just so incredibly, like, I was losing my mind. I, I, I screamed. Uh, so uh, for those of you who didn't see yesterday's game uh, versus the Mystics, uh, just at the end of the third quarter, buzzer beater shot, uh, Dana Evans took a shot, like, just from midcourt and just launches it. And, even, oh, my even goodness. Even, like, the other end. That's not even – I think midcourt is even unfair. It was the other side. The other of side of the, the logo. logo. Like, the far side of the logo. Like, she's, like, right there. Look. No, she's not even at the logo yet. <laughs> I looked Gary it up on – uh, I looked it up on ESPN, and that is a 48-foot shot. Uh, 48 feet. That is, uh, that is ridiculous. But anyway, um, I don't know. Uh, I feel as if sometimes like I I just saw her body move and I just saw the ball leave her hands and something just told me like, you know, she's going to make it. Yeah. Uh, I was standing right there. And the first thing I thought of was last. I think we talked about it earlier. Maybe it was last season or something. I remember that, you know, fans know that every day, they, at the end of practice, all the teams take half-court shots for money. And I guess it was the finals last season, and they did that like they do every practice. And some guy, a fan, is like, you need to be practicing like X, Y, and Z instead of taking half-court shots. And everyone's like, dude, they do that literally at the end. Like, practice is over for one, but they do this at the end of every game. Now look, sir. Now look. You were mad they were practicing <laughs> half-court shots, and now look. We will take your apology. (laughs) Good for Dana, though. Love that for her. Yes. uh, Always uh, have been a huge fan of Dana, like, ever since her first game this season. Uh, So um, I want to get to a question that Marquita asked about uh, Indiana. Uh, So we've addressed this before on the pod. And I know, uh, Sabria, you were mentioning that they Mm -hmm. were playing on a farm. They were playing on, like, five different venues. So Marquita asks, do you think the team will fold or move? Uh, Their attendance is bad. And I know you had a sign-up sheet for Sky fans to volunteer to cheer for the the fever I I hate that for them but like I said before I don't think and this is up and it's not a bad thing it's just a realization and something that I think Indiana should work on trying to change I don't think that Indiana fans like Indy the Indiana fever they liked Tamika Catchings they liked the legacy and everything that she was doing in Indiana and so they were a lot of it recently was nostalgic for them and you had Tamika there in the building, part of the front office. So, like I just said, she was there. Yeah. Easily accessible. Like, I went and had my Tamika catching jersey. She signed it, no problem. 
And once that happened, that's kind of like uh, the last part that, you know, people could be nostalgic about and it's not there for them anymore. So I think that mixed with just the fact that their record was terrible last year and the rebuild, I think maybe this is growing pains because they didn't, you know, make sure it was a true, like, fan loyalty there. Um, but, yeah, the moving arenas, like you said before, did not help going to the farm. This time when I went to the farm, like, before you kind of just pulled up and you got to walk out, no. We had to figure – you had to literally – I wish I had the video. I will bring it next time because we recorded it. You had to go in and, like, go through an entire maze down a tunnel into something before you could even get to the parking lot. Then you had to walk down into another tunnel to get on the other side and go. And then it was literally a farm. Um, like, obviously not the same concessions and everything that was available in the actual arena from before. Not even, like, corn on the cob or anything? Or? Well, for one, I don't even know if I would have eaten anything because even the first game I was there, I was so upset. There was a bug crawling on me, and I was like, I'm ah. never coming to Indiana ever yeah, again. I, I, I don't do bugs. I think yeah. I saw a tweet saying that, like, I don't do bugs. You could rob me with a roach. Like, like, like that is me. I, oh, I, for I, sure. I, 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 I yeah, don't do yeah, bugs. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I was like, after that, I was like, I'm never going to Indiana again. But after that game, I had to even, you know, go and tell – the new, like, the interim coach, I was, like, he did an amazing job coaching that team. He was, like, very positive. I remember Indiana messed up on something, and I just heard him yelling, like, pick your head up, hold your head up. And I'm, like, that's so warming. And so maybe the coaching change, and I think if they can tap into the South Carolina fans more, I mean, granted, it's hard because that's Indiana, but they have to pick people to build around. And if you can get, like, Henny – um, mm. Nalissa Queen, like really this rookie class, if you can make it about them, unfortunately, I hate that though, because I'm a big Tiffany Mitchell fan, a big um, Kelsey Mitchell fan, and D Rob. I love them, but again, it's gonna be that awkward shift between veterans and rookies. But they can start by getting their players' names correctly, because I will say, when I was there, they introduced their starting five, which Nalissa Smith is a part of, and obviously. The entire whole second overall draft pick, and the announcer announced her as Nalissa Mitchell. Oh, you can start by getting your players' names right, and then maybe you know fans will respect everything more. Um, yes, the game is on a literal farm. <laughs> First of all, yes. I gotta say that those of you in the comment section, like y'all, are making me chuckle. So yes, it y'all was are hilarious. It, it was giving courage the cowardly dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm like even they just had like their um the ten year I think we talked about it. they just had the ten year yeah their their anniversary yeah and yeah. it was not th- I'm like I don't it listen. was nothing yeah Indiana if you're listening call me uh, I did say that um people will not do right by y'all for how y'all did Amisha so if you make amends with Amisha and how y'all did her then maybe we could figure it out but I will be down there actually um in July to do something with Grow the Game and my girl Tiffany Mitchell so. Hopefully we can get people to come out for that. And I will, I'm happy to work with, you know, people on the ground to see how we can fix that. But I hope Indiana gets it together. Honestly, I I want to see them to still be there because I feel like that's a a quick away arena that, you know, we can go to here, like, you know, Vegas and Phoenix and LA, like they're all right there. Keep us, give us like, you know, a little sister in the Midwest and, figure out all that other stuff. So I don't I hope they get together. Please don't take Indiana from us. Please don't take Indiana from us. I know cuz I I feel as if, you know, the geographical rivalry, uh I I feel as if it, it's important. It's important. And I don't think Milwaukee is getting a WNBA team anytime soon. They don't uh, need one. Yeah, cuz they could, yeah. Don't nobody even like the NBA team for real. <laughs> they don't need one. Yeah, so yeah, Indiana needs to stay put. Um, yeah, speaking of uh, yeah, getting it together, uh, I completely missed the ad read. Uh, so anyway, uh, anyway, <laughs> if you want to support CHGO, uh, download the Points Bet app. Use that code CHGO when you sign up. Do it right now. You get two r- r- risk-free bets up to two thousand dollars, and if you make fifty dollars or more on your first-time deposit, you'll get a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content, and you'll get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. There is, I might like to add, a Chicago Sky shirt, which is super. 
super dope. Anyway, that's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, a free t-shirt, all for making more than a $50 first time deposit at points bet. Uh, $50 is like maybe four or five chicken tenders uh, at Wintrust Arena. Uh, so anyway, uh, you, you, it's your home for live in-play betting. Just got better. Introducing Points Bet's new feature, Live NBA Same Game Parlay. Only for the first time ever, you can build the perfect live NBA Same Game Parlay only with Points Bet. You can buy your favorite bets anytime during the game. You can boost your live Same Game Parlays so you can watch live, parlay live, and boost live with Points Bet. And online sign-up is now available in Illinois, so download the app and just do all that stuff right now from your phone. What are you waiting for? Uh, I waited like like 50 minutes in to do the ad read. <laughs> so once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. And we were living our bet life on this podcast, which is why you forgot the ad read. So, hey. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Exactly. You know what? Yeah, we get fired up. I mean, we also had three games to talk about, too. So, like. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about the expense of the food at Wintrust, and he said fifty dollars is two chicken tenders and one drink. <laughs> and park and parking went up. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> oh my goodness! So I eat before I go and try to get there two hours early just to find a parking spot. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if you uh, get to the game early enough, you can live your bet life that way. <laughs> um, and also, too, uh, if you like what we're doing, if you enjoy CHGO, uh, definitely uh, become a member of CHGO. Uh, you get to uh, see all of our content. You get to. <laughs> oh, my God. $7. They're pretzel. not wrong. <laughs> I haven't I haven't been recently, but DePaul games were like unreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally know what you mean. Um, yeah, and, I, for, I've been and do- for what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't want, like, my tuition dollar should be subsidizing the price of a hot dog, you know? Like, you're going to pay me, you're, I'm going to be paying this much to attend this school. Are you crying? And- <laughs> yes, because that pretzel <laughs> one was so funny. <laughs> All right. Um, where the heck was I? Oh, dang. All right. Sign change, up for C- <laughs> change court of law to the um, the food price discussion. Actually, you know what? L- <laughs> let us make this part of court of law. Let's yes. say like I, I, so wind trust concessions are way too much. Uh, also too, just uh, my first game covering. Uh, I got hungry. You know, maybe this is my fault. I didn't bring anything to eat. So I was like, let me eat something at the game. And I ended up waiting like 25 of minutes in did. line yes, you did. to get some chicken yes, tenders. You did. Wait, I mean, when you were covering for media? Yes, I was. There and should be food. Because we would cover for DePaul and it was like fully catered. Oh, was it? Oh, it, well, it used to be that way when I used to cover Bulls games. But I have never actually experienced that at a Sky game. And I started covering the Sky games in 2012. <laughs> Come on. Oh. You would have thought Gordon Ramsay was in the kitchen. <laughs> Aaliyah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Um, so, yeah, Wintrust food is expensive. Uh, <laughs> Judge Whitaker, well, like, do, do you hold Wintrust Arena in contempt? I for- do. I do. But honestly, the lines are so long. Every time I go, I've never stood in line. I can't even tell you what they have. Maybe I've only gotten a drink from there. The only place I go and get food um Bulls games and Red Stars games cuz I think they have the best food and they have alcoholic drinks there and you can just stand outside and drink your pina colada, <laughs> eat your food and just let the breeze hit. So maybe so Winchester can actually can start by adding to their liquor because the wine does not do it for Sabria, me. Sabria, look at this comment. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Although Sky Show does make a great point. Chinatown right there, everybody. Go, yes. go get some boba. I know Diamond DeShields was a huge boba fan. Like, I would always see her pregame with a, with a thing of boba. All right. So definitely do that. Get some banchan. Get some uh, some Korean fried chicken. And then walk, walk to the Sky game. All right. So Sky Show has it figured out. All right. So the last thing we wanted to talk about on Court of Law is that yesterday, there were a lot of games on TV. Yeah. Um, Big Kathy... Please call me because we're going to have to talk about why you had every single team playing one day in the day. I mean, people were NBA finally me to death yesterday, but there were like no games on Saturday. You had everybody playing yesterday. 
one game was at one central time. The other game's at two. So you don't have the split screen on League Pass anymore. So now I can't even watch a full game. So maybe I catch the full game of the two o'clock game. And then you have four more games at five. And the funny part is, is I know for a fact, whoever was putting this together was like, all right, y'all. Okay, so look, we can have Phoenix and LA play at three. And then we can have Chicago and Phoenix play at five. But they didn't realize that's the exact same time because of the time zones. <laughs> so it's they five need not. Somewhere. And then none of them were on TV. So it, did it really matter? Like you didn't have the TV slot thing. So mm-hmm. let's not do that. Let's come on, Big Kathy, please. <laughs> I remember just jumping on like WNBA Twitter. And uh, I know all, pretty much all the game or the, or the five o'clock games all went on halftime at the same time. So everyone was just kind of sitting there in silence. <sighs> yes. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, um, we're going to have to schedule a new date for this um, matter, and we will see what happens, and I'll rule before the end of the season. But let's just never do that again. (laughs) All right, so the league gets a pass for now, but, yeah. (laughs) Like, Judge Whitaker will make her final ruling at the very end of the season. Yes, but for now, it's Sky in four, and the four stands for the four games that they had on at the same time yesterday. (laughs) Yeah, they were all really great games because my team lost. Oh, my God, Bailey. <laughs> all right. So all of you in the comments, I got to say that you like y'all have been so incredibly funny. Yes. Uh, and I, I really hate to end this show, but all good things must come to an end. But uh, y'all can make us laugh again this hard next week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week.